Today we're checking out Pokemon Ultra Light, a fan game that lets you play as the Ultra Recon squad from Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. You have to go out on missions in Ultra Space to save people and to try and stop Necrozma from causing a major disturbance. On top of that, this is sort of like a mini roguelike. So every single one of your runs is going to be different, you're going to have to go through different rooms where you can battle wild Pokemon, defeat bosses and have random side events. And while you're doing all of this, you're going to have to manage all of your resources very well because they run out quickly. With that out of the way, don't forget to subscribe because I would love to hit 500k by the end of the year and make sure to join the notification squad. So let's hop on the back of our Solgaleo and save Ultra Space. We start off our first day in Ultra Megalopolis, inside the light hub of the Megalo Tower. Here we meet up with Commander Black who's been waiting for us all day long, and it turns out my real name is Light Squad number 800. I can't believe my parents didn't name me that, that's the best name ever. He tells me to come and meet him at his office on the 49th floor, so we waste no more time and head straight there. Here he's going to give me a little overview of how the Light Squad works. We have to go to different Ultra Dimensions and restore store the balance there to make Ultra Space a safer place, because they're all being attacked by Ultra Beasts. He then asks me what my preferred mount is, either Solgaleo or Lunala. I'm a big fan of the Moo myself, so I decided to go with Solgaleo. But we can't use him in battle at all, we can only use him to traverse Ultra Space. Because if he gets injured, he might not be able to create Ultra Wormholes anymore. With my suit and mount covered, I'm all set to start my very first mission, so we join him in the mission room. Here we meet up with another light recruit, number 789. He actually started a couple of days ago himself, and goes on to explain explain that light missions can be very dangerous if you aren't prepared well. And all the items and money you find on your adventures have to be relinquished to the Ultra Recon Squad as a part of the upgrades program, but don't worry because you can get light coins in return, which you can then use to buy upgrades for your system to make your upcoming missions a little bit easier. You can buy healing upgrades which will provide you with potions, rare candies, berries, and stuff like that at the beginning of your mission. Just when everything else is about to get explained to us, Commander Black comes back and he says to 789 that he shouldn't be slacking off trying to teach me everything and instead should be on his mission instead. Commander Black doesn't seem like a nice guy at all, but we're going to have to follow him if we want to learn the ropes and don't want to get fired. He goes on to show me the ultra wormhole through which light missions are initiated. As my very first mission, I have to find and defeat an ultra beast. So let's jump into the portal with our big lion and see what we're up against. We end up in a jungle with the ultra beast aura of a buzz wall radiating everywhere. So we have to find and eliminated by going through this entire biome. But the first step that we have to go through is pick our starter. Here you can pick from three new Ultra Beasts. You can either go with Poipoil, the one that everybody knows, or one of the two new ones, the Electric type Voltorque, or the Psychic type Iron Lusk. Once you've chosen your beautiful and strong starter, you get to pick an additional Pokemon. These will always be random and can basically be anything, but considering that we're in the very first biome, these will almost always always be first stage Pokemon. On my very first attempt, I picked up Voltorque and Fuecoco. After this, you have to pick an artifact and a support Pokemon. Artifacts are basically very powerful items that act as passive buffs. For example, on my very first attempt, I could choose between the Biohazard sign, which states whenever your Pokemon suffers from a critical hit, apply either spikes, stealth rocks, or toxic spikes on the opponent's side of the field, which can be very very useful, but you need to get critted for this to activate. The second one is Poisonous Sack, which gives your Pokemon Liquid Ooze as its ability, on top of its already existing ability. So no more healing from your pain. And the last one I got was Blunt Sword, which makes your not very effective moves deal 25% more damage. As for a support Pokemon, you have to choose one, and they also give you special abilities. For example, here I had a Voltorb that had a 50% chance of exploding, had only 5% of its remaining HP. HP at the end of the turn. On top of that, if the opposing Pokemon takes my Pokemon out, they take one fourth of my maximum HP in damage. And that isn't all, there's also a 10% chance to cause paralysis when an opponent makes contact with me. Every single Pokemon has a different ability, so make sure you read everything thoroughly so you can pick the best one for your adventure. Once you're done with your preparations, you get to go further in your biome, and you will always come at a crossway where you can choose between two paths. These will be in 
indicated by special symbols, and if they are type symbols, you'll be facing some wild Pokemon. On my very first run, I went with the water type element and ended up running into a Froakie. But this is not just a Froakie, once you enter the battle, you will have to battle this Froakie and a bunch of other Pokemon. Because I picked Volt Org, this was an easy win for me, and once the wild Pokemon are defeated, they will drop you some loot bags. These can consist of berries, items, medicine, and a ton of useful things that will allow you to get further in your run. As I was running through some more wild Pokemon, I eventually came to a door with a skull on it. This indicates that you're about to fight a boss. Since this skull is black, this is going to be a sort of mini boss, and not the Ultra Beast because that will always be at the end. I had to face a Drampa, and even though I was able to take down my Fuacoco, I still heavy slammed it out of here. It ends up dropping more loot than regular wild Pokemon, and on top of that, the loot is also of better quality. Along your journey, you will also come across chambers with question marks. These will lead to various locations, but the very first one I got was a mining institute. Here you can also get some extra items like max revives, plates, and everything you can basically find in the underground regularly. Once you've gathered those items, there is also a chance for you to run into a shop where you can sell them and buy a variety of goods because all of these shops will be randomized every single time. They will have useful held items for you, TRs that you can maybe use to upgrade your Pokemon a bit, and of course the regular healing items like revives and potions. Once that's all gone, you run into a red door with a white skull on it. This indicates that you've reached the end of the dungeon and the Ultra Beast is waiting to beat you up. And that's exactly what happened when I faced Buzzwall. It took my Fuikoko and Voltorb and squashed it with its big thighs. So they sent the squad out to rescue us and bring us back to base. Upon waking up, we see that they laid us out in the dorms. They tell me that the loss is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of because this can happen to the best of grunts. I go next door to check out the quote-unquote stables where they have all the Solgalea and Lunalas. I find out that I can upgrade my mount to a shiny one for 50 light coins. This is definitely something I'm going to want to do because I just love showing off my drip. But I'd like to get all of the upgrades first, so this is probably the last thing we'll do. I then head back out on an adventure to the same jungle, but I pick the Psychic Snail Irelusk this time because I found out that he's by far the best to run through the first stage with. On top of that, I also got a Panpour, which is not great. Hashtag hate the elemental monkeys for life. And we pick up a Budgeoo who will give me three random berries the moment that we pick it, but also one more at the start of each stage. And there's a 50% chance to use Sweet Scent at the start of each turn, but that's not all that great. And also a Survivor Stone, which gives me a 20% chance to endure a fatal attack with 1 HP remaining. Arlusk was putting in the work, sweeping through everything because he can set up and boost its own special attack and special defense and then do huge damage with Confusion, Water Pulse or Mega Drain. After running through some wild Pokemon and collecting some loot, I stumbled upon a Slowpoke. And even though Slowpoke is very forgetful at times, here he can actually remember your Pokemon's moves. But only one move can be remembered, then he'll forget what he was doing, which is pretty funny. After once again defeating a boss Drampa, I ended up at Shuppet Shack, and you can give him money, and in return, he will give you a random item. Bruh. I got absolute garbaggio, so I headed up back to the Ultra Beast, and faced Buzzwall head on. I just set up one take hard, then I hit two confusions, and just like always, it's mind over matter, Buzzwall goes down, so we get a call on our communicator, and they congratulate me with my very first successful mission. They take away all my Pokemon and items, teleport me back home, and tell me to go and talk to Kamehameha. Commander Black. But first we run into 789 again, he also tells me it took him several attempts to beat his first Ultra Beast, but he should go back to his missions because if the Commander realizes that he's slacking off again, he'll get another earful. Since we don't want the same thing to happen to us, we head to his office, but he isn't too impressed with me, because compared to the average recruit, we completed this rather slowly. So I'll have to impress him with one of the next tasks. This time he wants me to go through the Ultra Jungle again so that we can reach the Ultra Deep Sea which is basically just the next stage. Once we're able to do that, we have to report back to him, and he also tells me to go back to the mission room because there might be a couple of people there who need our help. The first person wants me to use Poipoil, Voltorc, and Irelusk. 
mask. I've already used two of them, so I'll just be picking Poi Poil in my next run so I can complete this. The next guy wants me to defeat eight more rooms, which should be no problem. And the last guy wants me to defeat Buzzwall again. There's also an analysis here that can show you how many missions you have initiated, how many times you've failed missions, how many starter Pokemon you've chosen, and so on and so forth. So we head back to the jungle, pick up Poi Poil, lose and redeem our mission. And as a reward, we get an easy 10 light coins. I got to the end of the jungle again on my very next try and defeated Buzzwall with Iralusk once more. We can then move on to the deep sea level, but all of my party members level up by 10, giving them a huge boost in stats and evolving the Litten that I picked up into Toracat. Once you arrive in the next level, you get to pick another Pokemon, adding a third team member to your team, then also get to pick an extra artifact and either swap out your support Pokemon for something else or evolve it to get even more buffs from it. Ended up swapping out my Diglett for a Stuffle, which will use Pain Split for me if a move hits me for 60% or more damage. I also picked up a Line Noon and a Combo Counter, which basically just works as the metronome. The more I'm using move in a row, the more the damage will stack up. Down here, I battled a new mini boss, Delmize, but with Torcat, this was no problem. I also ran into a question mark room that turned out to be Voltorb Flip. I'm not too great at this game, so after the table exploded in my face, I ended up being blasted into the final boss's room. But something isn't right. We see one of our fellow crewmates battling against a weird black Pokemon slash Ultra Beast that nobody's ever seen. The man that's getting his ass beat once again is 789. He said that he tried to defeat it with his entire party, but it didn't even break a sweat. This thing is way too strong for him, so he says that if I'm not even able to beat it, we're done for. I throw out my Torcat and start the battle against Necrozma. Torcat actually shows off its fangs against Necrozma, bringing it down to red HP before getting taken out by breaking swipes and mirror shots. Linoon isn't able to land a single hit, all because because of Swagger, so Irelusk had to take it out with Brine. Necrozma flees and we report back to HQ that we've found 789 and that we've managed to fight off that weird black thing. They tell us to come back as soon as possible, but 789 has different plans. Necrozma dropped a broken communicator and he knows something is up with it. And even though his entire party is fainted, he still decides to go after Necrozma because he needs answers. HQ forces me to come back, so we have to leave him alone for now. And after receiving 19 more light coins, I head back to the mission chamber to complete my two missions here and get 20 extra light coins. We head back to the commander's office and after explaining everything that happened with Recruit 789, he gets incredibly mad. He can't believe he's pursuing UB Black all on his own, but on the other hand, he is also very delighted that we have managed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with UB Black and even scared it off. He doesn't know if he'll ever find Recruit 789 again and tells me to keep my activities in the Ultra Jungle and Ultra Deep Space and not go beyond them, because then we might get into trouble ourselves. He then goes on to dismiss us, and we go and upgrade everything. We fully maximize our healing upgrades here, which gives us more healing items at the start of our runs. We also buy the reroll package, which means that if we get an artifact or Pokemon we don't like, we can always just reroll for a new set. We start yet another adventure and end up losing in the first biome once more. After getting delivered back to HQ, we get informed that our friend is back from his mission. Mission. But he's very much injured because Necrozma didn't hold back against him this time. On top of that, the commander has actually gone out to try and fight Necrozma himself, so from now on we'll be reporting to the head secretary for a while. Before we go and introduce ourselves to the head secretary though, we have to check up on our friend and see how he's actually doing. Apparently everybody's been laughing at him because what he did was actually pretty stupid. And this is also not the first time he's ended up like this. You see, his father was actually admitted here with some life threatening injuries and the commander would visit him every night and batter him to get better and pressuring him that wasting any more time would lose him his rank and his livelihood. On that same night he fell asleep next to the stretcher of his father but when he woke up his father was gone. The head secretary said that he left HQ even with all of his injuries and a few days later he was given up as missing and he was never found until this day. You see that communicator that Necrozma was holding was actually his father's and he believes that if he keeps on chasing the Karozma that he will finally be able to reunite with his dad.
A very sad story indeed, but we will definitely try to either find his dad or avenge him. For now, we're going to let him rest and go to the head secretary to introduce ourselves and get our new mission. She goes on to say that my achievement is nothing compared to what she did and that she is also the chairwoman of the Ultra Rican squad, so we should have some respect for her. She goes on to ramble about how last time we failed to defeat an Ultra Beast in the deep sea biome and instead defeated UB Black instead, which is not not a great achievement in her eyes. And this actually counts as a failure, so she wants me to go back to that deep sea and defeat the Ultra Beast there without proceeding to the next level. So I guess that's what we'll be doing. But first we accept a couple more quests. One man wants me to take down some more Ultra Beasts, which we can easily do. And another one wants me to evolve three of my support Pokemon, which is going to take a while. But it's nothing we can do. With the mission's accepted, we climb back on our Solgaleo and head back to the jungle. Running through it this time with a Watril and the Iralusk again. Buzzwall got absolutely destroyed and we got a killer Watril as our reward. On the next floor, we evolved our Zigzagoon support pet into a Linoon and re-rolled our new Pokemon to a Chadot. As our artifact, we take the Elemental Prism who reduces damage taken from super effective moves by 25%. We chattered our way through all the wild Pokemon and ended up with a new Ultra Beast. One that's actually not in the mainline games and it's called Tropalala. I'm pretty sure it's a grass type because with just three chatters we managed to defeat it already. This time, our entire party levels up to 35, and there's also been a change of plans. We can actually go to the next area, because the commander's signal has been lost ahead of here. And since we're the closest member that's nearby, we have to go and look for him. So we jump in the hole and end up in the power plant section, where Necrozma's aura is blazing across everything. We pick up a herbal bag, which gives us some more healing items, as well as a Venomoth, and we're not going to be changing around our support Pokemon at all. We more through the enemies and end up at the first boss room, but it's a little bit weird because we see the commander here fighting Necrozma. The commander is incredibly annoyed that we're here because he wants to defeat Necrozma by himself, but we've been sent here by the supreme leader, so he has no say in this. But he isn't having any of it. He tells me to leave or die, and I think I'd rather die. So I go on to attack the man, but he counters back by throwing out his pincer, who is somehow even able to take out my chat odd besides me having to type advantage. But no worries, because Kilorotril is here to save the day with Electro Ball. Kilorotril wins this once again with Electro Balls and Dual Wing Beats. Catastruck is able to one-shot me, so I have to bring in Venomoth and put it to sleep. I'm also guessing that this is the final evolution of Voltorg, and it definitely looks like a Frankenstein monster, as the name implies. I'm not able to do enough damage, so Arilusk has to come in, take heart a couple of times to boost its stats while using Recover to heal up, and after everything, we just bring it out of here just like the last Pokemon slacking who gets killed by confusion. But a beam but a bang we defeat Commander Black but Necrozma is able to flee so we both go after it. But it's not looking too great because once again the commander does not have any Pokemon remaining, only fainted ones. So just like with 789 we're going to have to save his butt. But first we end up running into Looker of all people. He says that he's lost because he's taken the wrong turn or perhaps a lot of wrong turns. He wants me to bring him to the nearest police station, but there are none here. At first he thinks we're some kind of delinquent who just thinks the law doesn't exist, but he quickly goes on to realize that that's not the case. Instead he believes that he is stranded in another unknown world. So my commander says over the communicator that he should head back to the ultra wormhole so they can go to the HQ where they can maybe help him. So as a token of his gratitude, he gives me a Team Rocket insignia, and with his weird clothes that we've never seen before, he ends up dashing off. Then another obstacle reveals itself, this time it was a Shedinja, and normally this is super easy to beat if you have a super effective move, but now they have Kecleon support, meaning that every single turn their type will change. And so it was able to do a ton of chip damage while I was waiting for that opening to strike. Eventually we did take them down and reach the final boss once more. But we see that the commander is using his right Lunala to fight, which is actually illegal to do. But Necrozma ends up taking it away and ends up turning this game into infinite fusion to create an absolute abomination. The commander thinks that this is the end of us. This entity is only a harbinger of destruction and nothing can stand up to it. Not even the legendary Pokemon of the sun and moon. The communicator says to leave the commander behind and leave this place because we cannot be killed here 
But if legendary Pokemon can't beat this thing, I guess a legendary trainer has to do it. And we also have to hold our promise to 789 to avenge his father, because this thing can't go unpunished. So let's give it everything we've got. I paralyzed the turn one with Venomoth Stun Spore, then brought in Iron Lusk. I hit two Shadow Balls to cripple it, but Iron Lusk ended up going down by Heat Wave. I guess the crossbar might be French because he likes eating snails. But we still have Kilowatt Rule in the back, so with an Electro Ball, Dawn Wings Necrozma is defeated. It flees once more, and the commander is super thankful and even owes me his life. The commander knows that he's going to be stripped of his title once he goes back because losing a mount and using it in battle is a criminal offense. But the both of us end up going back unscathed, and we once again get a nice 23 light coins. The commander's last words to me are that this is actually part of a way bigger scheme than I think, and that everything I've done so far might actually be something I end up regretting in the end. I guess we'll just have to find out what that even means in the future. We accept one more mission, and that is to defeat a Zerkatry and then go back to the commander's office, who's now been permanently dismissed and replaced by Chartreuse. She's kind of impressed with the display that we've put up by saving Commander Black, but she does still think that a major part of luck was involved in our rescue. Regardless of that, they have actually managed to locate where UB Black has fled to, and just before Commander Black got the boot, he insisted that we would be the ones to find Necrozma. She tells me that it's hiding in the depths of the Ultra Desert, one of the harshest environments for a squad member to be in. Even the best ones can survive here most of the time, but if we want to capture Necrozma, we're going to have to go down there to either capture it or take it down. And if we can't manage to do that because it turns out to be too strong, the Ultra Beast might end up getting out of control and that's going to cause a lot of chaos. And we don't want that. Despite all the risk, we still decide to go through with it, but first we need to do some upgrades. So we upgrade our reroll package once more and head back into the jungle where we find a new kind of room that just allows you to to heal your Pokemon and the statue. On this run, we also managed to beat Zerkatry, but unfortunately, we weren't able to find Necrozma, so we headed back to the lab, turned in our final quest to get all the light coins we need to buy the final upgrades and the shiny Solgaleo. We can't be more prepared than this right now, so with all of this preparation done, I head back in. Along the way to the deep depths of the desert, I ended up finding a Staryu support Pokemon that might have been one of the most broken things ever, so I picked it up. I also picked up a Corvusquire for my team that will eventually turn into Corvan Knight, one of the most broken Pokemon ever. And as my artifact, I got the Sprinkle Lotad, which can help me by summoning the God of the Pawns by my side for a single stage. Considering Lotad is one of the best Pokemon ever, I will absolutely embrace this gift and march through the depths of the sea until we stumble upon the Charizard guy who will explain the entire lore of all Charizard to you and if you manage to listen to all of it he gives you an item that will up fire and dragon type moves by 50%. Since I have a Charcadet on my team that will eventually turn into an Armor Rouge I will absolutely take this super good item. At the end of the second stage I had to fight Nihilego so I threw out the Lord of the Pond and Bubble beamed it twice to wash the poison out of the jellyfish and evolve our Charcadet into Armor Rouge. We then jump in the next wormhole to come out in stage 3, where our final opponent will be Zerka Tree. I evolve my support Staryu into Star Me, I pick up a Cloth Sire as my next team member, and the Elemental Prism to reduce even more super effective damage. I started running through the Pokemon dens and found a Cobalion along the way, as well as a Verizian, who both got turned into this evening's dinner by using Lava Plume with Armor Rouge. After another long monologue with the Charizard guy, I ended up at the end of the dungeon fighting Zerka Tree. All it took was a Lava Plume from Armor Rouge and a Poison Jab from Cloth Sire, so that means our Pokemon gain 10 more levels, so we finally get Corviknight, but we also get to see the evolution of Irelusk into Karkoluz. I actually really like this design, it's very clean, and it just looks like it would fit in with Poipoil and Naganadal perfectly. Then we get thrown into the Ultra Desert, and we see that Necro is 
here once again. This time I get an Aerodactyl as my teammate and we all know he's super fast and has a huge attack stat so I'll take it. And we also pick up a Licky Egg which immediately gives it 6 additional levels to give us even more of an edge against Necrozma. Just like always we have no problem getting through the dungeon but then our first mini boss shows up. An incredible double battle against the Landorus Therian and a Deancey. I didn't think I was going to be able to beat this all by myself but luckily our friend 789 comes along to help us at the right moment. Armorouge, Lava Plume and Heatherlisk's Hyper Voices combined with Naganadal's hit managed to take out the Landorus. But our friend here only seems to have two Pokemon and they go down rather quickly. Diancy has also powered up its Body Press with Diamond Storm because it managed to up its defenses a couple of times. Once Armorouge went down I was able to hit an Iron Head with Aerodactyl before getting one shot but I still have Corviknight in the back. We hit that last Steel Wing and these two monstrosities are down. Our boy has actually got some leftover medicine so he heals up my entire team and tells me to go on ahead while he does the same to his own. We end up finding an old lady here that can teach her Pokemon an egg move and I decided to go with Roost on Corviknight. After this I ran into the item trader room where you can use two items to create another one but nothing here was really all that useful so I moved on to the final boss room. We fight Necrozma once more and this time our friend is ready to fight by our side. But just when we're about to attack it together, it transforms into the ultimate Necrozma form, which is said to even ascend the power of God himself, Arceus. So I don't know how two lowly grunts are going to take this down, but maybe we don't have to worry about that yet because Necrozma starts talking to us? We can't seem to listen to it because the communicator keeps on telling us that we should defeat it before it becomes any stronger. Because apparently this guy has been the root of all of the issues in Ultra Space. Necrozma is the only Pokemon why the Light Squad even exists. And it threatens the safety of the Ultra Megalopolis as a whole. But Necrozma just said that men in suits are attacking it. And that it's just defending its family because it's his duty as a guardian. The communicator butts in once again saying that if we defeat it everything will go back to normal. And everyone will be happy. But Necrozma disagrees because the men in the suits only want to capture Necrozma to use it and enslave it. The communicator says that once it's weakened the extraction team will relocate it to somewhere where it won't do any harm. Necrozma recognizes that we wear the same clothes and think that we're also going to attack it and at this point I'm just starting to feel very bad for it because it doesn't really seem to know what's going on it just wants to live in peace and be left alone alone which is absolutely normal. The communicator says one last thing and that is that they will make a separate squad to search for all the missing personnel. 789 bumps in and says to Necrozma that he's the one that made his father disappear. But Necrozma doesn't remember because he's made so many people disappear already. He screams out to give back his father but Necrozma says that it's all the men in suits fault because they hunt him down and causes everything he loves pain and agony. Agony. He himself intends no harm, he's always lived in peace until that day. 789 doesn't believe it at all and says that it's lying through its skin and that it's just a mindless violent animal. He then asks me if he would take down the Grozma together with him because we did make that promise all those years ago. Gaslighting 101 baby, because I don't want to battle Necrozma anymore. But we have no choice now. It's time to battle Ultra Necrozma. Aerodactyl and Naganadal do some decent damage with two Thunderbolts and two Stone Edges, but both of them end up getting taken down by Power Gems. Heliolus comes in and he's only able to get one hit off and I bring in Karkaloos. One last Night Daze calms down the Necrozma and that's when the rest of the squad drops a cage on his head and starts surrounding it. They thank us for weakening Necrozma because without us they could have never captured it. We should celebrate because we have just allowed the future to be utopic. Because Necrozma is not only the king of the Ultra Beast, it's also an unlimited power source. They're not going to set Necrozma free somewhere else, they're going to bring it to Megalo Tower, the tallest tower in Ultra Megalopolis. And you Use it to power the city forever, keeping it trapped in a tiny cage for eternity where it will suffer for eternity which makes me incredibly sad and I'm kind of mad and disappointed in myself because I started chasing it in the first place. But the crewmates here aren't done yet, they 
fire us just like they did with the commander. There is absolutely no future for us aboard the Ultra Recon squad waiting for us. And 789 asks about the missing people. Are they still going to search for it? Is the light squad still going to be a thing? But no. They're going to shut it all down because they got what they came for, Necrozma. Everything else was just a ruse to try and cover up the fact that they were trying to capture the ultimate power source. And that's when 789 realizes that the Ultra Recon squad never had to fend off these Ultra Beasts. They were just attacking them to try and get Necrozma out. Everything was peaceful until we stepped in. It's all just like Necrozma said. We are the bad guys. The commander says that all of this was necessary because otherwise nobody would have put their lives on the line to try and save Ultra Megalopolis. And that's when they teleport away Necrozma to his new exhibit and leave us behind with the worst feeling ever. We spent the rest of our days pondering what would have happened if we didn't attack Necrozma. But 300 years later, on top of Megalo Tower, cracks began to show in Necrozma's cage. And he ended up breaking out, which means he's free once again. But what does this mean for the people of Ultra Megalopolis? I guess we'll have to find out once they bring out a sequel, because that was the end of Pokemon Ultra Light. I personally really enjoyed this game so much I wish that there was a different ending to this where you can choose to not attack Necrozma but this game was made for game jam so they didn't have that long to work on it I guess and who knows maybe when it gets popular enough they will update it in the future it's a super short fan game it only took me four hours to complete so if you don't have a lot of time to play a long fan game this is definitely something you should try and touch and definitely if you like Pokemon roguelikes I also think there's not enough play with the Ultra Recon squad and this just makes everything perfect. For what it is, I would give this game a 9 out of 10 and I hope you guys enjoyed it yourselves. But for now, I'm going to finish the video by thanking my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It is super appreciated. It really helps me out a lot and you get access to some very cool emotes and roles as well as a special chat in my Discord server. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggle, and I'll see you all next time.